Annapolis, Indiana. Today I'm here to go over the e-collar with you guys, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this system is completely waterproof. Just make sure whenever your dog is done in the water, you take the collar off, dry their neck off completely, and then put the collar back on to avoid any skin irritation. Uh, the remote will actually float if you were to drop it. Uh, the distance on this system is a half mile, so you can still use the remote and your dog will feel any stimulation you give it up to a half mile away. Uh, now, whenever you are with your dog and you are awake, this collar should be on them. This is your dog's new best friend and this is your new best friend. So, make sure again, you're with your dog, you're awake, collar should be on. Every three to four hours, go ahead and loosen the collar up rotate it in another part of the neck, then tighten the collar back. Um, so every three to four hours, you're gonna to wanna to do this to avoid any hot spots, sores, anything like that. All right, so you're probably wondering how tight does your dog's collar have to be? So this e-collar is going to be tighter than the typical dog collar. Uh, reason being, we wanna make sure that these prongs are sifting through your dog's hair and making proper, consistent contact on the skin. So once you have the collar on your dog, Go ahead and put two fingers underneath the band, and if it's snug, you are all set, ready to go. But if it's loose enough where you can fit three, four, or your whole hand through, then it is way too loose and you need to go a couple more notches. Another way you can know if it's tight enough is try to move it from side to side on your dog's neck. If you're able to go from one side to the other, it is way too loose. When you go to move it, you should see your dog's fur and skin going along with it. Now, because we do have to have it so snug, uh, if you don't follow the instructions of rotating the collar every three to four hours, you can start to see sores develop on your dog's neck. So if you see scabs, sores, and pairs around your neck, of your dog's neck, then you know that you're not rotating the collar enough. Um, but if you were to see anything rashy, fur balding, anything that looks like an allergic reaction, it's probably an allergic reaction to the nickel and the metal tips on the prong. So if that happens, stop using the e-collar, contact your trainer immediately, so that way we can get you set up with some hypoallergenic prongs. Okay, so we're gonna go over the contents inside the e-collar box. First off is the manual. So this has all the information you could possibly know about the e-collar system. On the back is their contact information if you need to get a hold of them. Ecaller.com is on here. Make sure you go on there to fill out a registration form for a two-year warranty for free on both the collar and the remote. Uh, they'll cover any damages except for damage caused by your dog. Moving forward, we have a charger, and it's a dual charger, so it will charge both your collar and remote at the same time. So right in here on the inside of the e-collar is this charging port. Make sure when you put this on your dog in the morning, you're gonna want to completely close that so that way if your dog does go in the water, you don't have to worry about water seeping in. Also, you have the charging port on the remote on the back of here. And you're gonna wanna charge both the collar and the remote every single night, just like you do with your cell phone. Some people find it helpful to put it right next to their cell phone charger. Alrighty, uh, also in the box, we have a lanyard that you can put right here on the remote. That way you can always have it around your wrist or neck. Also, we have a few tools in here. This first one, you can use to take off the prongs here or tighten them up. This tool here is what you're gonna put on your collar and you'll turn your dial above a 25 and press the button and you should see a flashlight appear to tell you that the e-collar is working. Also, we have this circular tool here with a little edge on it. You put that on the case to pop off the cover if you decide to change cases or if you just need to get in there to clean it. Also, you're gonna see that your system should come with an extra set of prongs that are just a little bit longer than the ones on the collar. Uh, so this is gonna be for our long-haired friends like our golden retrievers, German shepherds, breeds like that. 
Alrighty, so that is everything that is in the box. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the actual e-collar and remote. Okay, so now we have the collar and remote ready to go. They're both turned off right now. Uh, to turn the collar on, there is a red dot here, and then there is a red dot on your remote. These are magnets, so you're going to put them together, and then you will see a green light to come on to say, hey, it's turned on, and then it'll continue to flash green to tell you it's charged. If it was flashing orange, then it's charged somewhere between 25 to 50%. If it's flashing red, it is charged less than 25% and is going to die soon. But once you have it turned on, that is it. You don't have to mess with that collar anymore. Now, just because we turned the collar on, it does not mean the remote is on. So you are going to have to turn it over and you will see an L button and it says on, off, and light. So you're going to press and hold until you can see that screen come on and now you'll be able to see everything on there. Instead of holding it to turn it on and off, if you tap it, it will activate the flashlight feature. So one tap will be a strobing light, one more tap will be a solid light, and one more tap is going to turn that flashlight back off. So once again, if you hold this button, it will turn on and off. If you tap, it will activate the caller's flashlight. Next to that, you're going to see an M and C on, and you will also see an M and C on the screen right now. We want this to be on C for continuous. So M stands for momentary, C stands for continuous. I'm going to hold this button here and you're gonna hear that little beep to say, hey, it has changed modes. Now it's on M mode, so we're gonna go ahead one more time, hold that down. Now it is on C. This is what you should always see is the letter C. That stands for continuous. So if we were to continue to hold down one of our stimulation buttons, it will continue to stimulate the collar um, until you either let go or if you hit 10 seconds, then it will automatically stop stimulating as a safety feature. So on this mode, we do have two different stimulation buttons you'll see S and S. This can be a two dog system. So if you look closely at the screen, it will say 1D flashing at the top. So I know this is a one dog system. Uh, if you have a two dog system, it will say 2D at the bottom and it will be flashing as well. And then one dog is for each stimulation button. But like I said, we're on 1D right now. Um, and with the continuous mode, if we have this at let's say level nine, and we hold down this black S, this collar will get stimulation at level nine. If I hit the red S, it is going to add five levels to whatever that dial is on. So you can see it goes from nine to 14. And it will not continue to keep adding five levels. It just adds the five levels to whatever the dial is on. On the other side, you're going to see uh, the letter T button. When you tap that, you'll hear that tone go off. That is just so you know everything is turned on and communicating with each other. So once you turn everything on, before you put this on your dog's neck in the morning, press that T button and you'll know, okay, we are good and ready to go. Also, last thing I'm going to show you guys on here is the dial. So the dial is what changes the levels. It goes all the way from zero to 100. When you hit level 100, you'll see it says HI for high. So if, I, if at any point I were to hold this dial down, it will lock in on whatever number it is on. So no matter how much I am turning this dial, no matter what, the stimulation is going to be at that level when I press one of the stimulation buttons. If that happens to you and you don't want it on that button, hold down the dial again, and then you will see the numbers are able to go up and down. Alrighty, so that is it for the e-collar explanation. If you guys have any questions, please reach out to any of us at Off Leash Canine Cincinnati or Indianapolis. Thank you guys.